And the reason why we are so full of expectation in our hearts for God's glory is because everything we need is wrapped up in that glory. Amen. The word glory means, in, in, in the word is kapot in Hebrew, it simply means the heavy weight of God's presence. The heavy weight of God's presence. And I want you to understand that we experience the presence of God in various ways. In a nutshell, there, there are about five ways you can experience the presence of God. First of all, the first dimension is God is omnipresent. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, God is everywhere. And that is why even the psalmist says in Psalm 139, where shall I go and escape your presence, O God? Will I go to the earth? We, we can switch off the, 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 the icon. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, thanks, God. Shall I go to the heavens? Even as I rise to the heavens, there I find your presence. Mm -hmm. okay. Shall I go to the Sheol, the depth of the earth? The underworld, even there, I will still find your presence. He says, shall I go to the other side of the oceans? Even there, I still find your presence. Amen. There is no way in God's creation where you will escape God's presence. No. That's why the scripture says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. You can't escape the presence of God. That's the first dimension. However, you should not search for the omnipresence. You must go a step further. And this is the second dimension. The Bible says where two or three come together in his name, he is in the midst of them. That's another dimension of his presence. Wherever people are gathering in the name of Jesus, he is there. I know that theologians would like to complicate that, but let's receive the simplicity of the word. In the midst of people that are gathered in the name of Jesus, he is in the midst of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that is why even right now, whether we are saved or not saved, but if we meet in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I just also advise you on something? That is why it's so important that when you do things, do things in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because that alone will attract the presence of God. That is why when, when David approaches Goliath, he says, I come in the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. In other words, there is authority there. Even when we open businesses, when we write books, we do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The presence of God manifests. And the third dimension of his presence is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you, you become the house, the sanctuary where God stays Amen. by his spirit. Hallelujah. That's another dimension and our prayer is that as we continue to evangelize, every person may experience that. It's a beautiful thing when you are the sanctuary of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you understand the gravity of that. It is for this reason that Paul says, listen, don't allow your body to be defined by sexual immorality. You are bigger than that. Hallelujah. If you can have a revelation of your body, as the sanctuary of the Most High God. Believe me, you will decide without a preacher that there are things that are just not befitting. Yeah. Yo, my God. Praise the name of Jesus. Sure. Don't need a preacher. Sure. You just need a revelation that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, drugs cannot defile this body. Alcohol cannot defile this body. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me, beloved? Yeah. So that is why this revelation is powerful for holiness. This dimension of God's presence. Amen. And then another dimension of his presence. Is when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. There's another beautiful dimension. There's another beautiful encounter. Not only are you the sanctuary of his presence. But he becomes your sanctuary too. I don't know if you can wrap your mind around that. He is in you and you are in him. I, I, okay, can you wrap your mind in the it's a beautiful thing to be ha having God by His Spirit dwell within you. But based on your hunger, He says, not only will I dwell in you, but I will be all over you. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. So literally now, you, you are, you are the, the walking glory. Praise
praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You are exuding the presence of God. Because when you show up, it is as though God himself has shown up. Because he is in you and he's all over you. Praise the Lord. But there is an even greater dimension than that. The dimension of glory. Hallelujah. The dimension of glory. This is a dimension, beloved, that Moses was crying for in Exodus chapter 33, where he says, show me your glory. In other words, he's saying, I have been seeing the pillar of cloud by day. That signifies your presence, but that won't satisfy me. I've been seeing the pillar of fire by night. That signifies your presence, but it will not satisfy me. Show me your glory. Praise the name of Jesus. So the dimension of glory it is a beautiful dimension that I want us to explore today. Hallelujah. We appreciate that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. But we want to invite you to a higher dimension of living. The glory dimension. That's the invitation this morning. The glory dimension. Praise God. And I want us to understand that these things are very important, beloved. The next move of God. The glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Before the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is going to usher us into that glory dimension. Praise the name of Jesus. Once again, we acknowledge that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we are not yet there. You see, this dimension of glory very much depends on how hungry are you? How, what's your appetite level? Do you have the appetite for something greater? Because you see, it's a very important thing to understand this. You know, Moses had a conversational relationship with God. This is very important. Moses, the Bible says he will speak to God face to face. Obviously, you will not see the face of God. That is just an expression to say, Moses will hear the voice of God. He will not guess it. You see, the conversations that God will have with Moses were not presumptuous. Many times when we say God said, many times it's presumptuous. But Moses will hear an audible voice of God. But Moses was not happy to camp there. Glorious as that experience was. Yeah. Actually, even later on, God will brag about him and says, with others, I show myself in visions and in dreams. Yeah. But not so with Moses. In other words, I don't give Moses dreams. Yeah. I want you to understand the gravity of that. I don't give Moses visions. When I want to communicate something to Moses, I go to him directly. Yeah. What a privilege. Yeah. What a privilege. But Moses was not going to search even for that. In other words, he was a prophet in the league of his own. When other prophets were seeing visions, Moses had conversations. When other prophets were seeing dreams, were having dreams, Moses would have a talk with God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, it is an amazing thing when a prophet is privileged to have heaven come down and chat with a prophet. So that when a prophetic word has been given, there are no ifs and buts. Yeah. It's very clear. This is what was said. Praise the name of Jesus. And, but Moses is saying, Lord, no. You know, I know you, you have favored me. But I want to know more about you. I pray that you may not have an easily satisfied appetite for God's presence. May you not have an easily satisfied craving for God's presence. May you be restless even in your experiences. And that is why we cannot even walk in arrogance for the experiences we've had. Praise the name of Jesus. We can't be proud. That is why whenever I see somebody, just a minute experience of God's glory, all of a sudden they are untouchable. You can't say things to them. You can't even advise them. Just because of a glimpse of God's presence. We know we're in trouble because you cannot go to the next level. That is why even Paul, when he had that dimension of experience, the Bible says that Paul was given to his flesh so that it would keep him humble. Because yes, the presence of God ironically can make you arrogant. Ironically. So it is for this reason that we 
tremble in his presence. Even though we have experienced glorious things, but we say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, help us to walk in humility. Hallelujah. Because we know what has in our way. Praise the name of Jesus. There is more to explore in you. Now, it is for this reason that I want you to deal with the desires of the flesh. Because I've come to a place of understanding that you cannot create God and the things of the flesh at the same time. Confront the desires of the flesh. Every appetite that is competing with the appetite for the presence of God, confront it. Because you can't push two agendas at the same time. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says the desires of the flesh are hostile to the desires of the, of the spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want to stay for two. When you are not hungry for God, if you are just maybe speaking in tongues and kicking a few devils, you know, ask yourself, how come am I, am I so satisfied? You know, you were satisfied too soon. Too soon. Are you aware that it will take eternity to explore who God is? It will take us eternity. Even when we transition to glory, even when we are clothed in our resurrection bodies, we will still need eternity to explore who is Jehovah. So you can't be satisfied on this side of the grave. Praise the name of Jesus. And here are a few things that um, I want us to be just careful of. We spoke about this in our Thursday meeting. Number one, don't be preemptive about what God is going to be doing in this glory dimension you are going into. Don't be preemptive about it. Many times we interpret what God is about to, uh, was about to do based on what we know. Don't make a mistake of drawing from your traditional experiences of God moves. And then you take those experiences and define the future based on those experiences. Don't make that mistake. We are going to see something fresh, something new. Amen. We are going to see things that no eye has seen. Amen. We are going to hear things that no ear has heard. Amen. We are going to conceive things in the spirit that no mind has conceived. Praise the name of Jesus. And that is why I want you to be a blank slate and say, Father, write on me. Praise the name of Jesus. I have no preconceived ideas about what you are about to do, but write on me. Praise the name of Jesus. And, and that was the lesson that Elijah had to learn. Elijah, we have seen the fire, we have seen the earthquake, we have seen the earth weed, but today I want to learn, I want you to learn that I can come in a still small voice. Don't prejudge what I'm about to do. Praise the name of Jesus. If there's a chorus that you once sang and then the Spirit of the Lord came down, don't force us to sing that chorus. If there's a sermon that you preached one time and the Spirit of God came down in power, Please don't force that someone upon us. Praise the name of Jesus. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So that is why I want us to come with innocence and with purity of heart and say, Lord, your will be done in the season as it is done in heaven. No tradition. No tradition. As a matter of fact, that is why I'm even weary of the concept of revivalist, which is not in the Bible. The concept of people who are called revivalists. These are man-made titles. So and so is a revivalist. There is no such a thing in scripture. Because now we tend to again accept that there are certain people who carry the presence and we must all listen to what they are saying about the presence of God, about the glory dimension. If they have not approved it, the church won't do it. Because you see, these are revivalists. These are men and women who prescribe how revival should take place. Can I just warn you? There is no such a thing as a revivalist in the kingdom. So, All of you, let me release you. All of you are supposed to be carriers of God's presence. All of you. All of you. That is why the curtain has been torn. So that you can come to the glory place. The partition has been removed. So that there will be no specialized revivalist yes. who will tell us how the next move will happen. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. You see, yours is to pray. Yours is to walk in repentance. And yours, beloved, is to be hungry for God. 
Yours is to desire God. In the posture of repentance and desire for God, he will manifest himself. Praise the name of Jesus. Can I just say this to you, beloved? The manifestation of the glory of God is the prerogative of the Holy Spirit. No man can orchestrate it. You can't even crank it out. And that is why I'm saying be a blank slate and allow the Spirit of God to write through you. Can I just shock you further? There are people amongst you who are not even speaking in tongues that God is going to be using greatly and mighty. And that is why we even dare not say, no, no, so they don't fit in what God is. Who are you to say that? God is going to be moving even among the Roman Catholics, brethren. You will see the move of God even in the Anglican Church. Even in the Methodist there. That is why we humble ourselves and we say, Father, your will be done. Praise the name of Jesus. Can I just say this to you? In, in a way, I do feel that the charismatic church needs to be careful. Because we're too preemptive. And sometimes we even undermine mainline churches. Because we think we know everything about the move of God. And the mainline church folks are just coming and saying, no, we, we don't even know how to speak in tongues, you know. But we're saying, Father, your will be done. And I like these guys, they will never fake tongues. Yeah. Out there one level. If God is not doing it, they won't speak in tongues. And that's what God wants. Yeah. Not fake things. Oh. Not fake things. Oh that is why, again, whenever we lay hands on people, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I never force anyone to speak in tongues. Because everything has to be genuine. If God is not doing it, we will not crank it up. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Because the facade that we are putting up will block our participating, our participation in, in am I saying this way? Participation. <laughs> You will not participate. Yeah. And I said this on Thursday that it's not that God will not move. Mm. Because nobody can stop his move. Yeah. It's just that you won't participate. Yo. <laughs> you see, the move yeah. of God is so powerful, no man can stop it. Yes. If you stand in the way, like Ananias and Sapphira, yeah. you will be removed. Mm. It was, you see, the move, when you want to picture, have a picture of the move of God, picture it to now. There is no building that can stand on its way. Praise the name of Jesus. There is no structure that can stand on its way. There is no man's intervention that can stop it. Praise the Lord. So if someone tries to stop it, that person will be swept over. That is why I even said to you, relax about this current dimension you are tapping into. Even a wrong chorus will not stop it. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even a wrong sermon will not stop it. Even, even, even an MC who, who has some loose screws, they won't stop it. Praise the name of Jesus. So relax about it. Hallelujah. God will thrust them to the back of the church because God will come like a tsunami. When the cloud fills the house, every minister knows it's time to shut up. The cloud of heaven is in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. Solomon witnessed this. When they were dedicating the temple. When they were singing, they were singing, there was a repertoire. Praise God. I even said this to you. That, you know, the move of God does not mean we should not plan. The move of God does not mean that we should not have order. A structure. We must have a repertoire. We must have a structure. We must have a program of action. But when the cloud comes, everybody will know. <laughs> we suspend everything. But here's the thing. Don't force the cloud. Don't manufacture the cloud. Believe me, when the real cloud comes, when the real cloud comes, because you see, when God is moving, nobody can stop what he's doing. That is why Balaam could not curse what God was blessing. 
There was an angel with a drawn of soul that was standing in front of Balaam because why? God was on the agenda. He's busy beating up the donkey. Move, move, move. And the donkey had to speak. Why? God is unstoppable. So tell me, I have to do <laughs> Your pet will talk to you. My God. It's a tool. When God is in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So relax about this whole thing about programs and you know wrong choruses. No, no, relax about that. I was I said this on Thursday with evening. She was like, did you wash your teeth? God forbid. But even so I says be be never for to. Do you know if God planned to move the day he will still move? Yeah. You sing out of tune. If it was his agenda that today I am moving, he will move. The important thing is your posture, more than the accuracy of your musicality. It is your posture. It is your posture, Father. Your will be done in my life as it is done in heaven. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Relax about it. Pray. Repent. Notice that. When, 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 when the word of God says, this, this is Peter, repent so that times of refreshing may come upon the Lord. He does not prescribe many things. He just says, repent. Amen. You want times of refreshing? Just repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be encouraged. This thing is going to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. This thing is going to happen. Amen. We go without us. It shall happen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Here's the thing that I want us to learn from Moses. Lessons from his experience when he was tapping into this glory dimension. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 13, it says, If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. (laughs) When it comes to the glory dimension, please have the right motivation. Moses was motivated by the desire to know God. Moses was not motivated by the desire for miracles. Now, I have something which probably you have not heard about the dimension of glory. The dimension of glory is often known for signs and wonders. When we talk about the dimension of glory, we all picture people rising up from wheelchairs, the deaf hearing, the blind receiving their sight. But I want to introduce something else. In addition to that. And what I'm introducing to you this morning is more important even than miracles. The dimension of knowing God in a deeper manner. Yes, what's that guy? When we talk about the dimension of God's glory, everybody wants a miracle. 
But very few people will ever say, Father, I'm coming into this dimension because I want to know you better. When Moses says to God, show me your glory. Moses was not asking for miracles, signs and wonders. But Moses was asking for deeper, more intimate knowledge of God. This is what he says. This is what he says in verse 13. That I may know you. <laughs> that I may know you. Praise the name of Jesus. And then he goes on to say, remember this nation is your people. In other words, I want to know you. I want to know your ways. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to know your ways. I want to come in, even to a point where I tap into wisdom for divine leadership. This is your, this is your people. This nation is your people. So in other words, Lord, I want to be even honoring in the manner I lead. Yes, it was a lot. These are things we're tapping into glory for primarily. As a matter of fact, miracle signs and wonders will be the offspring of that. I beseech you by the message of the Lord. May you be a unique type that will say the next dimension, I want to know God. Praise the name of Jesus. This is very important, beloved. This is very important. I want to be sound in my posture. Even as I lead in business, even as I lead in the workplace, even as I lead in the ministry, I want to walk in divine wisdom that I have received from the glory dimension. Praise the name of Jesus. You see, when the glory of God has manifested, you will be left with two types of people. The Moses kind and the Israel kind. This is what we see in the book of Psalm 103 verse 7. When the glory had manifested on Mount Sinai, this is what the psalmist concludes. He says, God made known his ways to Moses, but Israel only knew his deeds. Two groups of people. After the glory had manifested, there were those who knew his ways and there were those who only knew the deeds. So others will witness miracles. Others will witness signs and wonders. But others will know how those things are done. Huge difference. Huge difference. I don't know what, would you go for a miracle? Or would you go for <laughs> methodology. <laughs> My God. Show me the method. Show me your ways. Teach me methodology of the kingdom. Don't just give me a miracle. You see, uh, okay, may, may we not be the kind of people who just want fish without learning the art of fishing. <laughs> Let me just drop a bomb right now. Jesus never needed any outpouring. He did the outpouring. In other words, you will notice that when Jesus received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is no account of him needing another Pentecostal experience. Read your scripture. When Jesus received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't hear him yearning, longing for another outpouring. Because he understood the ways of the Father. That is why when you move into a place of the outpouring, when you move into the place of glory, don't just grab a miracle. Grab the mind of the Father. You see, this is, this is what it says, uh, just, just again, for, for you to understand how this thing works, beloved, this is very important. When you read about Jesus, the Bible says, this is how he explained himself. He says, whatever you see me do is what I see my father do. Yeah. For that which the father does, the son does also. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. So in other words, if I can have a revelation of who God is and what he's up to, yeah. I don't need repeated outpourings. <laughs> Let me just drop another bomb. After the day of Pentecost, do you notice when you read scripture, in the lives of the disciples, there was never multiple outpourings. Yeah. Read your scripture very carefully. After the day of Pentecost, there was never another time 
of the outpouring. The disciples waiting for another Pentecost. When they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they understood kingdom principles. That is why what was happening normally to them will be a revival to us. Think about it. What was normal to the disciples we will call a revival today. Think about this. When people are just going to worship and then someone says, rise up and walk. To us, that's a revival. A revival is taking place to us. But to them, there was just no more. The, 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 the circulation of handkerchiefs for people receiving their healing, to us, that's a revival. But to them, there was no more. Why? Because on the day of Pentecost, they did not just grab miracles, but they grabbed principles. It is for this reason that when Moses comes down from the top of the mountain, Sinai, Moses is not just shining with the glory of God, but he had something in his hands. The tablets on which was written the word of God. Principles. Principles. That is why you are contradicting yourself. I say this again. You are contradicting yourself. You, you are not in love with the word of God, but you say you want fire from heaven. You, you, you actually are very short-sighted in your approach. So, I want us to understand this, beloved. We need people who will grab biblical principles, divine principles, so that the idea of glory is no to Praise the name of Jesus. Let's be honest. Many of us are desperately waiting for a revival for certain things to happen. But can I tell you that the will of the Father is that those things should be happening normally. Sure. That's why Jesus did not need a revival. <laughs> Whenever Jesus went into a place of prayer, it was a time of refreshing for him. But he did not come into that place praying for another Pentecost. Praying for another Pentecost. Because he understood that as long as I can see what the Father is doing, yeah. that I will do. That's the glory dimension. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, you will realize that in life there are problems that need miracles and there are problems that need application of principles. You will not get a miracle for a problem where you are supposed to apply principles. Neither will miracles be done to compensate for your laziness. Miracles will never be performed to compensate for your ignorance. That is why I'm saying, listen, as we're about to move into this place of glory, please don't miss out on divine knowledge, divine revelation. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of revelation. So people can die waiting for a miracle where they're supposed to be applying principles. I pray, therefore, that you be very biblically balanced as you approach the next outpouring. Don't grab miracles only. Grab wisdom. Grab understanding. So that is why when this man comes down from the mountain, two things were very remarkable about him. Two things. One, his face was shining. That's the glory of God. And secondly, he had something in his hands. The tablets of stone. So, Listen, many of us will say, Lord, why do you have to give him your words when he has seen you? It's because God will never defy his word. God honors his word above his name. Praise the name of Jesus. And so I want to beseech you by the message of the Lord. Let's run after this thing. It's very important. Any outpouring, any outpouring where the importance of God's word is not emphasized, run, run for your life. Run for your life. Because the idea of every outpouring is to reveal Jesus. Amen. Jesus must be revealed. Praise the name of Jesus. And, and, and I want us to see this. It's very important that you understand that you will not overcome Satan by miracles. That's why you need to come out of the glory with the word of God. You will not overcome Satan by signs and wonders. He can perform a couple. 
but you will overcome Satan by your knowledge. Amen. Knowledge of who God is. Amen. That's why in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, the Bible says the people who know their God shall resist him. The false Messiah, the men of deception, they shall resist him. And then that's why again in, 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 in Revelation chapter 11 verse 12, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Praise the name of Jesus. So you don't overcome by that. If you are obsessed with miracles, then you are more keen to learn about who Jesus is. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. Believe me, the appearing of the Antichrist will be in accordance with counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders. So if all you are obsessed with is miracles, you are in trouble. Hallelujah. Now, this is what it says. You may just allow me to read Exodus chapter 33, verse 17. And then it says, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you ask for, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. So, when we sit in the church and pray for the manifestation of God's glory. Not everyone is going to ascend to Mount Sinai. The glory dimension is very exclusive. Salvation is for everyone. But the dimension of glory is very exclusive. That is why you have a very interesting situation. You have the nation of Israel with Moses. And then God says, only Moses can ascend. And even Joshua was left halfway through the mountain. And God says, I don't want anyone near this mountain. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Because this dimension requires that God be pleased with you. I know this doesn't sound politically correct, but this is very exclusive. And that is why I'm appealing this morning to a remnant of men and women who are going to say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, may I be found pleasing to you so that I may ascend your mountain. Praise the name of Jesus. And, and, and this is what it says. In, beloved, this is very important. In Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy hill? The one who has clean hands, a pure heart, and who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive the blessing from the Lord and the vindication from their Savior. Find out what pleases God. And this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. It says, find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you want to tap into the dimension of glory, just like Moses did, you must separate yourself from the fruitless deeds of darkness. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's repentance. So Paul is saying, if you want to find out what pleases God, separate yourself from fruitless deeds of darkness. That is why you cannot preach revival and not preach repentance. Praise the name of Jesus. You cannot preach the outpouring. You cannot prepare people for the outpouring without touching on repentance. There are people who are, <laughs> this is what it says, uh, I love it in 17, Exodus chapter 33. God says to Moses, I know you by name. I'm going to do this because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Can I just suggest to you that not all of us are known by heaven? Not all of us are known by heaven. And I'm not talking about existential knowledge. Existential knowledge simply means you, you are known that you exist. You are known that you are there. Existential knowledge. Here, we are talking about relational knowledge. Relational knowledge. So in other words, heaven can relate with you. And there are many people in church circles that are known, well known in the church, but are unknown in heaven. And that is why God clarifies this. He says, Moses, I'm about to show you my glory because I know you and I know you by name. Praise the name of Jesus. And I pray that you be not, you may not be known, you may not even be popular amongst us, but may heaven know you. 
so that you can move into this dimension. May heaven know you. But all come very close. You see, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, there are people that the Lord will confront. These men and women will come and say, remember me, Lord. I used to cast devils in your name. I preached powerful sermons in your name. Remember me? And God says, I never knew you. In other words, I know you existed. But relationally, I don't know you. I do believe that there is a separation that is taking place in the house of the Lord between those that are known and those that are unknown. May you be known. Hallelujah. And that is why, you know, one of the reasons why I, 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 I rally behind the, 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 the work that Babu Bella is doing on, on writing about grace. I don't want you to be deceived even by these grace messages yeah. that are actually stopping you from living a life of repentance. Yeah. Because once saved, always saved, you can do as you please. No, that is robbing you of the dimension of glory. Because now there is impurity in our hearts, but we are, we are told, no, you're okay, you're fine, you're fine. In the midst of impurity, in the midst of every unrighteousness that we have by now, you're told you're fine, you don't have to repent. Yeah. And then in the meantime, beloved, in the meantime, you are robbed of the dimension of glory. Yeah. We want to be known by God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the life of repentance is going to be very important as we move further. In actual fact, in Exodus chapter 33, verse 21, God says to Moses, Moses, there is a place near me. I want you to go there to meet me. A place near me. But the, Lord, the place that is near God is not a place geographically. Please let's get this right. A place near God is a place of repentance. It is not a geographical location that you can go to. But it is a posture of repentance. It is a posture of humility. And that is why in Isaiah 57 verse 15, verse 15 it says, For this is what the word of God says. He stays in high and lofty places. He is high and exalted. But he also lives with those that are contrite and lowly in spirit. Hallelujah. So God is in high places, but he is near those that are repentant. That word contrite means to show sorrow over your wrongdoing. That should define a believer. Don't mess up and pretend like nothing happened. Praise the name of Jesus. Don't just do things messing people up and then you pretend like nothing happened. No, 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 no. When you are broken, God comes down. That's a place near God. Place of brokenness. Say, Father, I lament over my wrongdoing. And we don't lament out of condemnation, but we lament out of desire to close proximity. Praise the name of Jesus. So please, beloved, when we talk about people that please God, we're not talking about perfect people. Please get that right. We're not talking about perfect people, but we're talking about repentant people. That's a place near God, a place of repentance. Hallelujah. And then for this reason, in Amos chapter 5, Verses 5 and 6, God says to them, don't go to Gilgal. Don't go to Bethel. Don't go to Beersheba. Don't try to recapture my presence in places where I once moved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That is why we're saying we're not even going to prescribe how things are going to move on going forward. We're not even going to say to you, this is how the move is going to take place. This is, no, 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 no. We've seen Gilgal, we've seen Bethel, we've seen Beersheba. Now we're saying, Lord, do a new thing. Break new crowns. You will be done in our lives as it is done in heaven. Hallelujah. Here's another thing about Moses. When he got to a place of glory, Moses was not taught by men by who, as to who God is. But God himself proclaimed to Moses who he was, who he is. That's very important. You see, in the dimension of glory, a false prophet does not stand a chance with you. There is no false teacher of the word that stands a chance. Among what we have among now. This is fathers. That's the dimension of glory. That is why some of us, who knows the best sense of civil restless? You you probably don't even have a scripture for, 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 for the situation you are seeing, but you know this is wrong. This is wrong. 
Everything in me is rejecting this. Why? Because there is a writing of the Spirit in our hearts. This is what it says in, in Exodus chapter 34, when Moses was just experiencing this glory dimension, verses 5 to 7. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love, maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin, yet does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Here's something that I want you to notice about the scripture. God is saying the Lord. God speaks of himself in the second person. In other words, he, 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 he <laughs> my God. God wants to explain to Moses who he is. And it's almost like, if, if I say, I, 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 th this is going to repel Moses. Let me say, the Lord. <laughs> and it's God himself speaking. The Lord is compassionate. The Lord is forgiving. The Lord is gracious. The Lord forgives. And, and he's saying all of this without anyone teaching Moses. But it is God himself proclaiming yeah. who he is to Moses. That's the dimension of glory. Kunukuluyazu was surrounded by a cloud of false prophets and false teachers of the word. And this is how it's going to manifest going forward, beloved. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. This is the dimension we're going into. Explained now in the New Testament. This is what it says. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people. Listen to verse 11. No longer will anyone teach their neighbor saying, no God. Because they will know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Praise the name of Jesus. I will write on the tablets of your hearts. Praise the name of Jesus. Please don't get me wrong. We are not saying we don't need teachers of the word. We do. We are not saying we don't need prophets. We do. But I believe there is a dimension of glory, beloved, where God will explain who he is to each and every one of us. Tap into that atmosphere. Into that atmosphere. This is very important. Because God wants you to know him intimately. One of the reasons why this generation has Christians who have many struggles is because God has not explained himself to us individually. Many of us are banking on hearsay information about God. The thing that will really change something that will make you radical in your faith is when God says to you who he is. And that is why you must push. You must push. You must press to get into the dimension when God will sit down with you and say this is who I am. Hallelujah. Every debate will be stopped. Every argument will be stopped. Hallelujah. Amen. And then uh, uh, there's a lot we can say about that. And, 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 and let's, let's just move on. The last thing that I want to say is when Moses came down, his face was marked with the glory of God. Amen. The Bible says in Exodus 34 verse 29, when Moses came down from the mountains of Sinai with two tablets of the covenant in his hands, he was not even aware that his face was radiant because God had spoken with him. Here's the dimension of glory. We're going to get into this dimension. The nature of God will rub on us. Here's what I'm here. When we get into this dimension, the nature of God, in other words, you will not even have to convince people that you're a man or woman of God. You know, sometimes when you see I'm a profile of us, I'm a prophet. Apostle, doctor, yeah. bishop, Sia Sama, Sia Sama, Sia Wakanda, my profile, I'll Sia Sama, my friend, and world, wow, eh? Yes, they are sophisticated in like, That is why in this church we try to avoid using titles. We, 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 we are not fussy on titles. Because we know that once you enter the, the glory dimension, 
wedi umuke wangena nje kule dimension ye glory so tell you if it will, it will not even matter whether people call you apostle or prophet it will not matter because your face will speak for you the countenance of your face will tell us who you are see the words with so and so has been in the presence praise the name of jesus so no you don't have, you, you don't even have to reprimand us with why we didn't call you prophet you know there are church circles where if you ever address and, and that is why oh, oh, honestly speaking I'm not offended. I'm not offended when someone says, uh, uh, "This is Christ Centered Missions Church, pastored by Simon I'm not offended. I'm not offended because I know that does not define me. What defines me is the glory dimension. When I've been to the presence of God, the radiance of heaven must cover me. Praise the name of Jesus. So that whether you call me by my first name or you say apostle, well, that won't be any important. Present of Jesus, it won't matter because the red is and then the Bible says, Oh Moses, people are praying, Moses, don't look at us. He had to cover his face with the veil. Hallelujah. We need this dimension. The reason why people are attending witch doctors, but some told the dimensions. But some work is told using witches when there is a dimension of glory. Well, that we should be tapping into. My God, may, may the Lord help us. You don't need a witch daughter. You don't need to consult anyone in order to create the glory. You know, uh, uh, you know people speak about the aura. Yeah. 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 With a, a, a red ink on the ground, on the spiritual ground, none of you will ever go to some moments. None of you. Yes, Mr. Lord. None of you. Unai, you should not talk when I let you smoke. Unai, you should not find out who's bewitching you and who's doing what. None of you will go to this, to those things. Don't consult even astrologers. Don't even go to palm readers. No one, and, and, and while I'm there, yeah. uh huh, I'm torn and I'm fat. Yeah, <laughs> this will be address a letter again. Here, get the names on social media. There's this thing, it comes in many ways on social media where you have to submit your photo, and based on the configuration of your face, someone will tell you that you are a, a, a businesswoman, you are this and this. That is sinister consultation on Facebook. Why, why, do, why does Mark Zuckerberg have, why do you need definition of who you are from Mark Zuckerberg? The Bible says in him we live, in him we move, and our identity is in him. Why should we be defined by social media? When, when you are beautiful, Lord, your heart is beautiful. Why do you need, because the, the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God testifies with our spirit yeah. that we are children of God. Why do we need affirmation from social media? You have a good heart. And <laughs> some of you submit your names. Stop it. Stop it in Jesus' name. Let heaven define you. Receive your glory from heaven. In the book, your name Ayanda. Ayanda means uh, 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 this and this and this and this and this and this and that. And, and then you are excited. You're posting on social media. This is how Facebook has defined my name. I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I'm going to be rich. It is fallacy from the pit of hell. I'm saying to Adam I'm saying to Abigail in the Derive your identity from the glory dimension. Praise the name of Jesus. If you are doing it, go delete it. Hallelujah. Because of my habits and social media are wrong. My God, come on, folks. Yes, and something as innocent as submitting your name and selling to Facebook so that they can define you. What lies ahead of you? What is your fate going forward? Yes. 
I read it. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you tap into the dimension of glory, you will be in the presence of God and then God will wrap himself on you. And then when you go down the mountain Sinai, people will never hesitate to understand who you exactly are. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, this is what it says in the book of 1 Corinthians. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the glory of God. We are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Hallelujah. So when we are in the glory dimension, whatever God is will come on us. And the Bible says, unlike Moses, our faiths are unveiled. Our faith, because Sifuna Gong, unveiled faces, and when, when, when we actually show up with this glory, we don't even have to hide it. Praise the Lord Jesus, the world must be desolate by it. That's what I'm you see, all the witches, all the witches, we confuse them by the glory of God. Not by consultation, not some funny consultation. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, we are raising a generation of men and women who are going to move into the glory of God. So that witches will just have to run when you show up. Praise the name of Jesus. Pastor goes to the and so I've been to the glory of God. I've been to the glory dimension. And that is why I exude the glory of God. Notice that the glory that was upon Moses was fading. But your one will not fade. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says what you are about to receive, we are receiving with ever increasing glory. Listen, Moses' one was diminishing, yours will be escalating. Praise the name of Jesus. So when you tap into the dimension of glory, we know nothing but increase. That's the right answer that we're going to be having. Ours will not diminish. And listen, it will increase. It will escalate as a whole chase. Let me submit you a beautiful picture. Here's a beautiful picture that I want you to contemplate on. The glory that we are going to be receiving in these last days will be so increasing, some of you will literally shine as you walk the streets. In the malls, in the public places, people are going to be saying there is something about you. There is something about you. Praise the name of Jesus. And this thing will just keep on increasing. That is why those that are called by the name of Jesus, those that are going to be caught up with Jesus, so I want to make glory. So I want to make glory with him. Someone has been prepared here. That is the beautification in the spirit as we ready ourselves for the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you might need to explain why you are Kazimu. No. <laughs> why are you not going to be Kazimu when you are Kazimu? No. No. You will have to explain that very soon. Why is it that Moses is shining and the rest of you guys are not shining? No. No. Praise the name of Jesus. And then this thing will escalate up until your body is translated into the likeness of Jesus. Can I submit to you that the translation of your body into the likeness of Jesus will be added on the glory that already will be there over you. Praise the name of Jesus. When was about 20 moon already. And then the translation of your bodies will just be a culmination of the glory in progress. Hallelujah. The glory that is in progress. Hallelujah. Let's turn to and say the glory of God is escalating. And the escalation is in progress. Hallelujah. My God. My God. This is powerful. Even if you're not that cute. Hey. Even if you're not that cute. You're going to so too much that you can see who is this one? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because we are supposed to train you soon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now to two more share. Come on, get nine cars more. Abantu so bad choir. Bazo choir. That is why I prefer the glory over everything. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you stand with it? When we turn into the glory of God, I pray that you go for divine knowledge. And may you allow God to proclaim himself to you. And when you get into the glory dimension, I pray that you may have those tablets of stones with principles of the kingdom. And I do know that some of you might have been shaken by the statement I've made. That you are not supposed to live in and out of the outpouring. The glory dimension is supposed to be your address. And such was the life of Jesus. And such was the life of the disciples. The reason why every now and then as a generation we have to wait for a revival is by default. It was never the original plan. The reason why we have to cry for a revival every now and then is because many times when a revival comes, we only take miracles, but we don't take principles. Without a season of Pentecost, you are supposed to be walking in power. Why? Because you always see the Father and you know what the Father is doing. And based on the divine revelation of the Father, you simply join him in what he's doing. When others need miracles to raise the lame, the lame from the wheelchairs, you do it normally. When others need a specific season in the spirit to give sight to the blind, you will do so normally. Why? Because you have grasped the principles of the kingdom. That's what we're going to go for in this next season. Principles. Tell me how you do what you do. That's what Moses was crying for. Tell me how you do things you do. And may be said of you, when God moved, in 2021, 2022, 2023, when the move of God took place, there are folks at Christ Centered Missions Church who understood the ways of God when others were witnessing miracles. Somehow, the move is no longer happening, but these people continue to walk in miracles. Because you see, principles will long outlast miracles. Are you hearing me? Principles of the kingdom, divine revelation, divine wisdom will outlast every move. When people are no longer enjoying the outpouring, you will enjoy the glory dimension. Just like Jesus. Just like Jesus casting out devils with ease. Giving sight to the blind with ease. Without a revival. Just no more ministry life. No more ministry life. HIV AIDS healed. Jesus my name. COVID-19 healed. Why? No more life. No more life. Glory dimension. Glory dimension. And this is what I'm inviting you to. Praise the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands. And Father in Jesus my name. We want to repent of our obsession with miracles. To the neglect of your presence. To the neglect of your word. To the neglect of your principles. And I pray Jesus my name that with the men and women of God. Whose faces will be shining. But as we go down this mountain. May we have tablets of stones of God. On which you have written principles. So that we may live for God. Live in the dimension of glory. I pray, Father, for men and women who, who will lay hands even in their workplaces without a chorus being sung. Men and women, oh God, who will lay hands on their clients, oh God, and they will see miracles breaking forth because they understand the principles. Raise them, raise them in our generation, right in this assemble, right in this church. Raise such men and women. 
We desire our God to be like Moses. When everybody else is marveling at cancer, being healed, and the lame walking, may we marvel at knowing your deeds, knowing your ways, knowing your principles. In Jesus' mighty name. Help us, O God. Show us.